In this video, we're going to take a closer look at how we can do stoichiometry with electrons. Uh, the upshot of all of this is just that electrons can act as reactants or products, just like a chemical. So any of the rules that you've already learned about doing stoichiometry with molecular compounds, you can just plug electrons in as if they were a chemical. Take a look at a reduction. Gold 3 plus reacts with three electrons to become gold zero, elemental gold. So in a reduction, electrons are reactants. They combine with some other reactant to produce a product. Whereas in oxidation, our example here is nickel zero going to nickel two plus and two electrons. Electrons are products. Free electrons come out of the process. So now for an example, how many moles of electrons are released when 5.44 grams of gold is oxidized to gold 3 plus? Uh, just as a reminder, if you need a refresher on converting from grams to moles and other stoichiometric concepts, you should check out my video from last semester called The Map of Stoichiometry. That was posted in chapter two. But to uh, solve this problem, we're given grams of gold initially. We need to get to moles of electrons, and the only way to get from uh, one substance to another is through mole-to-mole -mole conversions. So we'll need to go from grams of gold to moles of gold. 5.44 grams of gold, uh, starting material. We know that the molecular weight of gold is 196.97 grams. So we're going to divide our 5.44 by that molecular mass. That's going to give us moles of gold. Then we can just convert one mole of gold to three moles of electrons by multiplying by three. You crunch those numbers out and you get 0 0.0829 moles of electrons are needed or released when that much gold is oxidized. But how do we relate moles of electrons to an electric current? Well, honestly, an electric current is just a flow of electrons from an anode to a cathode. You can see that here. The electrons come out of the anode, they flow through the circuit, they make the light bulb light up, and then they flow back to the cathode. The amount of electrons is expressed in units of charge, and the flow itself is the current. Charge is always expressed in units of coulombs, and one mole of electrons will produce 9.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of charge. There's that Faraday's constant you've been working with. Current is expressed in units of amperes, and the ampere is one of the seven fundamental units of SI notation. An ampere is simply one coulomb per second. So one ampere means that there's one coulomb of charge flowing per second. And you can relate these two values through charge equals amperes times seconds. It's really analogous to water flowing from a faucet. The charge is the amount of water, the ounces of water that you obtain, and the current is the flow of the water, how many ounces per second come out of the faucet. So if my caffeine mug holds eight ounces of water and this faucet dispenses half an ounce per second, how long will it take to fill my mug? We start with our eight ounces. We use our conversion factor, the flow rate of 0.5 ounces per second to get to 16 seconds to fill my mug. Electric current works the same way. How long will it take for 14.8 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of charge to be dispensed by a 4.50 ampere electric current? Well, we start with our 14.8 times 10 to the fourth coulombs. We use ampere as our conversion factor, 4.50 coulombs per second. So we divide the coulombs by the coulombs. We get seconds left, 3.29 times 10 to the fourth seconds, or nine hours and eight minutes. Let's take a look at your uh, example problem from lecture today and see how this works in a more realistic context. So here's your example problem. This is the last apply new knowledge from Friday's notes. Copper can be plated out of solution in an electrolytic cell. The copper two plus ion will react with two electrons to make copper in its solid elemental state, copper zero. So how long will it take to plate out 12 grams of copper using a current of 3 amps? So we're going to treat electrons just as if they were any other reactant. So for instance, if I said one copper reacts with two atoms of oxygen to make copper oxide, then you would know 
for one mole of copper, I need two moles of oxygen. We can do the same thing here, just plunk electrons into our stoichiometry. Well, first off, we need to get from grams of copper to moles of copper. To do that, we're going to use the molar mass, 63.546 grams of copper is one mole of copper. And then from our equation, we know that one mole of copper needs two moles of electrons. One mole Cu to two moles electrons, meaning that in total we need 0 0.378 moles of E minus to reduce all of that copper. So now we need to convert those moles of electrons to coulombs of charge. And we use that, we do that by using our conversion factor here. So we know that we have 0 0.378 moles of E minus, one mole of electrons becomes 9.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of charge. If we crunch that all out, we get 3.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of electric charge. Now, that current, or that charge, is delivered by the current. So this is just like filling up a jug at the faucet. We need to know how long the faucet needs to run to give us all of the water we need. So we're going to look at the current. The current we have is 3 amps. We're going to plug that into our C equals A times S. This will give us the time needed to deliver that amount of charge at that flow rate. So we know that our so C over A equals S if we algebraically rearrange that. The amount of charge we need is 3.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs. We're going to divide that by 3.00 amps. We crunch those numbers, we get 1.22 times 10 to the fourth seconds, or 33.9 hours. That's a very long time. Well, that's because a 3 amp flow isn't very big, and 12 grams of copper is a lot of copper to plate out. So remember, when you're doing a plating out problem, start first by figuring out how many moles of electrons you need, just using stoichiometry. Convert the moles of electrons to the amount of electric charge that will deliver those electrons. And then use the charge to figure out, based on the amperage, how long it will take to deliver that charge using that particular electric current. See you guys on Monday.